Welcome back. So by popular demand, we're going to be doing the extra case before we do the final case, case four, which I was going to do anyways because on the forum it was arranged in the proper order. Case one, case two, case three, extra case, case four. And this takes place in the past and it involves some familiar faces, including one mysterious. They say mysterious, but more like Clearly, not on the level faces that we met in the last case. I mean, his name's Crook. So let's get into it. My name is Edward Crook. I'm a defense attorney, and a very wealthy one at that. Of course, I wasn't always doing so well. In the early days, well, they were pretty rough. It wasn't until about a year ago that I really fell on my feet. I just happened to meet the right people. People who could make use of my services. And would pay good money to have me in their corner. I find myself going back to that time more and more. A time when my life was changed forever. One year earlier. <clears throat> That's enough. I'm now prepared to give my verdict. Objection. Ooh! Your Honor, please wait. Can't end this trial yet. <laughs> Sorry, rookie. This is an open and shut case. The defendant is clearly guilty. Not that you would have had more of a chance either way. Yeah. Why does this always happen to me? My apologies, Mr. Crook, but I must agree with the prosecution. The evidence is rather clear. No. This court hereby finds the defendant. Court is adjourned. Ah! Why can't I never win? One trial. That's all I ask. Is that so bad? Huh. Well, that was a train wreck. Hell, you even lost against pain. Oh, hello. I hear that guy hasn't won a trial in over seven years. <laughs> yes? How long were you standing there? Long enough to hear you throw in that tantrum. Wah! I always lose. Why do I suck? Screw you. <laughs> this is Ness Tinlin. I've known him since we were kids. I wouldn't exactly call him a friend, though. This guy's a jerk. We stopped talking after we finished school, but he came back into contact with me last year. Ness always managed to get himself into trouble when he was younger. And he recently found himself working for some shady group called the Revalis. Dude, you still with me? How long can we keep up with this public defender gig anyways? It's clearly not working out for you. Maybe. I can't exactly not afford not to take every job that comes my way. I don't know, man. Maybe not cut out for this whole lawyer thing. You should come work with me. You never see me worrying about money, do you? Right. All you have to worry about is whether you're going to get arrested or not. Well, one thing's for sure. If I did get locked up, I sure as hell wouldn't hire you to defend me. Har har. Come on, I'm just messing with you, man. We're going out tonight. You should come too. It might help you unwind a bit. Pass. Don't be like that. Even by the first round. Seeing as you're broken all. <sighs> Pick you up at eight then. Fine. Awesome. Later, dude.
Oh, okay. We've just got to go uh, get drinks downstairs where I live. Uh, hmm. I thought you said you were going out. What do you mean? What do you, what do you mean? Don't you live here? All right. Huh. I just thought you might appreciate it, seeing as you never visit me here. Think I've got money to blow in a place like this? Fair enough. You are the unluckiest guy I've ever met. Anyway, don't those guys you work for run this place? Oops. Looks like you caught me. I need to have a chat with my boss, so... Why the hell did you drag me along with you? Relax. Just let me get this one thing out of the way first. Wait for me here and we'll hit the bar after I get back. Ah. Well, that's just great. What a waste of my evening. Damn Ness. Damn Casino. Damn Judge. Well, there's no point in me standing around aimlessly like this. Maybe I'll step outside for a quick smoke. Ah. Nice shot of the moon. Very fitting music. Old Virtue's last reward. How did it end up like this? After I passed the bar, I thought I'd be well on my way to becoming a successful lawyer. Turns out that doesn't work that way in reality. No way to get my name out there, not one client would think of hiring me. Laura left to turn, took on a job as a public defender. Sounds great in theory, but every case I get assigned is a complete mess. I heard the prosecution's case is airtight. The guy is so clearly guilty that even I know he did it. To mention that everyone is about some petty crime like vandalism or shoplifting. Nobody's gonna take notice of me if I keep working on cases like this. Ah, <sighs> damn. Uh, excuse me. Oh. Sorry to bother you, but I left my lighter at home. I don't suppose I could borrow yours. Huh? Oh, right. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. <laughs> um. Hmm? Uh. Name's Edward. Edward Crook. Smooth. Ah, nice to meet you, Ed. I'm Faith Truman. Ah. Faith? That's a pretty name. What the hell are you saying, man? It's so cheesy. Thanks. Uh, and back to the awkward silence. You come here a lot? Oh, uh, no, actually. It's my first time here. I, uh, friend dragged me down here for a night out. I guess that makes two of us. Hmm. Oh, really? There's this guy at the office where I work. Him and his sister wanted to check this place out, so they took me along with him. I see. Sometimes I feel like it's impossible for me to say no. I know the feeling. Oh. I like your badge. Huh? Oh. Thanks. It's a, uh... Hmm? Ah, oh, never mind. What's wrong? Ah, oh, no. Nothing. Come on, Eddie. Attorney's badge. Uh, huh? That's what you were about to say. It's an attorney's badge. Oh. I, I didn't know you'd that you'd recognize it. I'm familiar. Uh, right. It's a noble thing that you do, protecting people. Uh, it's not really like that. Sure it is. Uh, no, I mean, I haven't been doing such a great job of helping my clients. Well, as a way of catching up to them. So what? Isn't that better? What? If the truth comes out, does it really matter who wins and who loses? That's the spirit. As long as justice is served, the world becomes a better place. 
That's what I think, anyways. Huh. Guess I never really thought about it like that. Uh, hey, it's getting ch kind of chilly around here. Do you want to head inside for a drink? Huh. Actually, I was just leaving. The people I came here with are ready to go. I just stepped out a little bit before them. Oh. Okay, no problem. If you ever wanted to meet up again somewhere a little quieter... My number. Ah. See you around, Edward Crook. Uh. See you around, Faith. Well then. Hmm. Hey, there you are. Ness. We need to talk, man. Wait, before that, I got somebody that you need to meet. Uh, Ness, what? I found him, sir. Over here. Uh-oh, we're getting roped into the mob. Ah, so you're the attorney that I've heard so much about. Ness and I have been looking everywhere for you. Hello, you. And you are. Manners, dude. Don't you realize who you're talking to? Uh, that's all right, Ness. Respect is earned, etc. The name's Nathan Maggs. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Crook. Well, Nathan Maggs? Uh, hold up. You're THE Nathan Maggs? From Redco? That's correct. I see you've heard of me. Who hasn't heard of you? Nathan Maggs runs the largest, comp largest company in the country, Redco. What's a guy like him doing here, of all places? This has told me an awful lot about you as well. He has? He tells me that you're a public defender, that you've been struggling recently. Quit looking at me like that. It's true, ain't it? Please. There's nothing to be ashamed of. I was also going through some tough times back then. Back when I was just starting out. But just look at where I am now! You want to know how to be a success in this world? It's simple. Live up to your name. Be a crook. You take hold of every single opportunity that comes your way. That's why I've come to ask for your services, Mr. Crook. Oh, what? You want to hire me? Mr. Max has a case that needs to be settled. And I told him that you would be the perfect guy for the job. Wait a minute. What kind of case are we talking about here? My assistant was arrested for the suspicion of murder. Murder? Wait a second, you're sure you want to hire me for this? I've never defended anyone for a crime that even comes close to murder. Relax, man. You can totally handle this. It's just the kind of big case that you've been looking for, right? Ness, what are you up to? I'll pay you for your service, of course. What do you say? No. I can't take your case. Well! Oh? Ed! What are you saying? Are you seriously gonna refuse a case from Nathan Maggs, of all people? What about all that crap you were talking about before? You don't need to take every single case that comes your way. This is your chance! You can finally escape from that dead-end public defender job. About that. I'm starting to think that I don't have it so bad after all. Well, I bet someone who... the positive outlook on my life. Not to mention that I have a seriously bad feeling about this request. That too. What's gotten into you, dude? We just complaining about it this morning. Did you say that you wanted to do something worthwhile? I did. I've realized something. My work is important. I make sure that my clients are given a fair defense. And that they receive a fair verdict. What kind of garbage? You're exactly right, Mr. Crook. Everyone in this country deserves a fair defense, don't they? Do you not believe that my assistant should be given that same right? Well, yes, but he is no killer. I can tell you that with complete certainty. I need somebody to take his side in this fight. If not, he'll end up in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. Mr. Crook, as a defender of the courts, can you call that justice? Hmm. The 
Dark Age of the Law. You've heard of that, yes? Corruption that has defiled the courts for so long now. It's up to lawyers such as yourself to defend the innocent from it. Am I wrong? Ed, this is something that only you can do. This is your chance. Get out there and make a name for yourself. This is what you've always wanted, right? Well, Mr. Crook? And thus my life of crime began. Thus my life of crime began. What's it going to be? And here we are. Going into court. Good morning. Ness. Yo. What's that glare for? You're not thinking of turning back now, are you? Oh, well, maybe I wouldn't have taken this case if I knew that I only had this morning to prepare. Dude. It's all good. This job isn't as easy as you made it sound, you know? Calm down, man. I'll help you out. <laughs> Now, tell me everything you know about this case. Ah, uh, okay. My friend is Matt Dorr, Nathan Mag's personal assistant. So the victim, his name is Raymond Bett. A kind of mysterious guy. Oh. So this is not related to case two. As directly. Obviously related to Redco. But this is new. Bet's body was found three nights ago at a construction site. <clears throat> the police were called and caught the defendant as he was fleeing the scene. At least that's what they say. See? I told you, it's fine. Right. Speaking of the defendant, where is he? The police should be bringing, the police should be bringing him here any minute now. Now then, about the prosecution. Huh? I assumed that it was just going to be that pain guy again. Is it going to be Faith? Sadly, no. Some veteran prosecutor. Pretty well known from what I hear. Does this prosecutor have a name? Yeah. Well, something weird. Ah, what was it? What? Ah! Mr. Dorr, it's good to see you. My name is Edward Crook. I'll be representing you today. So you're the one that Mr. Mags hired. Do you really think that you can handle this? I've been asking myself that the same question since I got here. I'll be fine, man. Ah, Ness. So you're here too. These two know each other as well? I don't get it. How could a guy like Ness be in so deep with a company like Redco? Because they're in deep with each other. Every time I try asking him, he just changed the subject. Naturally. Well, aren't you going to ask your client some questions, Ed? Uh-oh. Right. Mr. Dorr, can you tell me what happened on the night of the murder? Uh, right. Well, I had a meeting at the crime scene with the victim. Then I guess I just blacked out because I don't remember what happened next. You don't remember? Is that true? Yes. The next thing I knew, I was being taken in by the police on a street near the crime scene. I think the shock of it all is messing with my head because the rest is kind of fuzzy. I see. You said you met with the victim? What for? Why so where she is at old construction site? Well, that's... Uh-oh. It's not really something that I can speak about, speak about freely. What? I need to know these things if... Ed! You can't force him to talk. But you can force him to not talk, you little slimeball. What they spoke about isn't really relevant to the murder, is it? I think it would be, to some degree. I guess. What on earth would he be trying to hide from me? Probably ends in five minutes, sirs. Please make your ways into the courtroom. This is it. Time to show him what you're made of, Ed. Yep, look who it is. 
Court is now in session for the trial of Matt Dorr. Get the prosecution ready. Well, well. Ready, Your Honor? No way. I don't believe it. Faith. She's really a prosecutor. That's the one. Prosecutor Truman. Couldn't have remembered her name a little sooner. What are you getting so worked up over? Well, this is certainly a surprise. Mr. Crook? Let you know. I kind of had a feeling that this would happen eventually. I just hope you remembered what we talked about before. Right. About doing the right thing. Fighting for justice. That's what being a defense attorney is all about. Didn't Mags say something similar to that last night as well? But Mags is also a manipulative... Uh, but Mags is definitely a manipulative snake. Whoa, hold up. Why is she talking like she knows who you are? Oh, um... Oh, <laughs> I see how it is, you sly dog. Shut up. If you're all done talking amongst yourselves, is the defense prepared? Oh, y yes, your honor. Totally. Then it appears that we are ready to begin. Now, Prosecutor Truman, your opening statement, please. Of course. The murder took place three nights ago at 1 a.m. on a construction lot at the east side of the city. The victim was identified as a man by the name of Raymond Bett. However, his, his occupation, as well as his origins, are currently unknown to us. Mysterious guy. I bet that Ness is hiding something about him, too. The murder was witnessed by a security guard working the night shift. He identified the killer as the defendant, Matt Dorr. A witness! Before that, I'd like for the court to hear more about the murder itself. I will now call the lead detective to the stand. Very well. Bailiff! And just like that, we've got the entire Nathan Mags payroll in the courtroom. Corrupt, corrupt judge, uh, corrupt uh, cop, uh, corrupt assistant, and corrupt uh, mob enforcer. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Oh, are we going to get the mirror B music? Are we going to get the mirror B music? Three, two, one. Oh, I hit it! Yes! Oh. This guy. Where's that music coming from? Um, witness? <laughs> the name, my dear lady, is Charles Fuzz. Rising star of the Criminal Affairs Department. Can that somebody this nuts be a detective? Detective, you were called here to tell the court about this murder. Can you do that for us? Sure thing, missy. That one, please. Call me Charles. Not happening. <laughs> Please, just give your testimony, detective. Oh, this guy. I swear. The case. Ooh! Proper dual destinies time. The victim was shot the victim was shot to death at around 1 a.m. three nights ago. The scene of the crime? A construction site here in the city. The witness saw the whole thing go down and called the police found the defendant on a nearby street and promptly took him in for questioning. Say what you will about Dill Destinies, but they had some really good had some really good music. Hmm. So the victim was killed with a gun. This is the weapon in question. It was found at the crime scene next to the body. Unfortunately, it seems that the grip has been wiped clean of any prints. However, we were able to lift the victim's prints from elsewhere on the pistol. The victim's prints? Yes. It appears that the pistol belonged to Mr. Bett. The prosecution believes that, that the defendant stole the gun away from him, and then wiped his prints once the victim was dead. The court accepts this into evidence. So, belonged to the victim, taken by the... Assistant. Probably killer. The good news is there's nothing conclusive linking Matt to the pistol. Right. The only prints were the victims. Please begin your cross-examination, Mr. Crook. 
Oh, hell. Thank you very much. Custom voice clips. I like it. Pretty sure these are custom voice clips. But where was he shot exactly? Take a look at this here autopsy report. He was killed instantly by a shot to the forehead. Ow. Yeah, there's no waking. Up. There's no walking away from that. All right. Now please continue, detective. Why a construction site of all places? What are you asking me for? I have no idea. The place was pretty secluded and there wasn't much security around. So it wasn't particularly difficult for either of them to just wander over here. It really seems shady about all this. I have a map of the crime scene if you're interested. Okay. And just who was this witness? It's a security guard working the night shift at the side. He says that he saw the whole thing go down from inside his station. You have to ask him yourself for the rest of the details. In the meantime, here's the police call record. Call with the security guard at 1.20 a.m. Time of death, 1 a.m. Okay, instantly, why'd you wait 20 minutes? Does that mean the defendant was arrested based on the witness's testimony alone? What about the crime scene? Aren't there any more clues there? Nah, the place was pretty barren as far as evidence goes. Take a look at the investigation report. It's all in there. A pistol and a key card. No other clues left to the crime scene. There was the pistol, of course. But apart from that, this was the only other clue that we could find. What is that? Must be some kind of electronic key card. We have no idea what it's used for, but it was found clutched in the victim's right hand. How peculiar. Objection! Ooh, hello. What's the meaning of this, Detective Fuzz? Whatever do you mean? That key card. Nobody told me about that piece of evidence. What the what? I mean, this prosecutor isn't as capable as I've heard she is. You seem pretty unprepared. Or that, or you stack the deck. Oh, my bad. It looks like nobody passed on the investigation report on to you. What an unfortunate error. I take full responsibility, of course. Do you think that this is some kind of joke? What is going on here? How could the detective have made a mistake like that? It's almost like he's a little snake. Why does he seem so calm about it? Detective, you must be more careful in the future. In the meantime, please submit this new evidence to the court. Whatever you say. Hmm. So this is suspicious. Something, something's fishy here. The detective is getting off way too lightly for such a major mistake. Huh? That's enough. I think we've heard plenty. I only have one more question for the prosecution. Did the defendant have a motive to commit this crime? As I said before, the victim was a man shrouded in mystery. So we're currently unsure of any ties he may have had to the defendant. However, it appears that this murder was not unprompted. As the witness that night will reveal to us. I'd like to call the security guard at the stand. I see. The detective, you may step down. Glad to be of help, Your Honor. Looks like it's time for me to make an exit, folks. Hit it! Just go! Oh, that was my jam. <laughs> See ya, Charles. Until we get arrested. Until you get arrested next year. I'm lost for words. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. Huh? Oh, I remember you. You're the name and occupation. My name's Mark Fallen. Works a security guard at the site where the crime took place. You were in one of those crazy, uh, secret demon uh, ace attorney cases I played. I don't remember the one, but. <laughs> Fucking crazy one where.
one of those, one of these mysterious ser serial killer cases. Uh, I think it's the one where, like, someone turned up dead in the bathroom in the courthouse at the last minute and involved him. I, I forget the exact specifics, but you, I remember you. Security guard at the site where the crime took place. This entire area was being protected by my watchful eye. Sounds like the sounds like the guy's a flair for the dramatic. Too bad his watchful eye wasn't good enough to stop somebody from being murdered. I've been told that you witnessed the moment at which the victim was shot. Are you able to testify about this? Absolutely. I saw the whole thing play out. Please begin when you are ready, Mr. Fallen. Alright, the shooting. I was in the guard station when I noticed two people that shouldn't have been there. I had to go find out who they were, but the guy with the hat pulled a gun on the other one. I thought he had to do something, so I ran towards them and yelled. I distracted the man with the gun. The other guy dove on him and knocked him down. I took the gun and fired a single shot at the man on the ground. My legs froze up as I watched him wipe the handle, throw the gun down, and make a run for it. I know what I saw! The defendant is definitely the man who fired that pistol. Well, this seems awfully conclusive. Now, hold on just a second. You're saying that it was the victim who pulled a gun with the defendant? It does appear to be the case, Your Honor. The victim drew his weapon against Mr. Dorr. But the defendant fought back by stealing the gun away from him then shot the victim dead with that very same gun in retaliation. And this was unexpected. Unfortunately for Mr. Dorr, there are no grounds for a justified self-defense plea in this case. The victim had already been disarmed and incapacitated. Shooting with a pistol was most definitely an excessive amount of force. Yeah, I don't think I can argue with that. Ah, well. We wouldn't have pleaded justified self-defense anyways, right? Right. Because I don't believe that Mr. Dorr killed anyone that night. Are you sure about that? This certainly was a surprise. Well, Mr. Crook, please proceed with your cross-examination. I mean... On one hand, he's starting to smell out some of the problems. And, on the other hand, is the fact that he doesn't want to talk about why he was beating the victim. Which would be a bit of a lingering doubt. But hey, first real murder case, gotta trust the guy. Even though I essentially got manipulated into taking this case. Okay, let's see what happens. Talking about the station shown in this diagram, aren't you? That's the one. There's a large window in the in the door on the west side, so I had a clear view of the whole thing. They weren't too far away either, so I was just able to make out their faces. I guess you'd be able to recognize someone from that far away. And that's bad news for me. Hold it. The man in the hat. I mean the victim. That's right. I was able to see what the men were wearing for my station. The victim was in a hat and trench coat. The defendant was wearing a black suit. A suit? That sounds about right. Hold it. Where are my arms? That was kind of risky, wasn't it? One of the men was armed. He could have been hurt. I guess. I didn't think about that. Actually, I always wanted to be a cop when I was younger, so the thought just kind of came to me. He thinks the witness watched one too many action movies when he was young. I don't like how I used to watch all those courtroom dramas when we were kids, huh? Hold it. The defendant knocked the victim down. I'll be honest, that didn't really strike me as a particularly strong guy. 
Like I said, the victim was distracted after I called out to the two of them. Plus, he was holding that heavy briefcase at the time. Wouldn't be so easy to fight back with that in your hands. You don't have a briefcase. I don't remember hearing about that. Hmm. Maybe you should ask a bit more about that. Right. Mr. Fallen, please add that last statement to your testimony. Okay, where is this gonna go? Hold it! That briefcase, could you describe it for me? Sure. It's kinda big and it looked pretty heavy, too. Maybe some kind of silver metal. Aluminum or something, I guess. Little briefcase, huh? Picked up the gunfight. Hold it! If I didn't shot the victim, you're sure about that? Absolutely. I see both men clearly from where I was standing. I'd gotten pretty close to the two of them before the shot rang out. I'll be bad news for us if it's true. You think he's lying? He has to be. Right. I think we have the obvious answer here, but we'll just go through the rest of these. You didn't think to stop the man from getting away. Objection! The witness stated that his legs froze in fear. He had just witnessed that this man commit a murder. It's only sensible that he wouldn't have tried to chase after him. I suppose that's fair enough. Absolutely certain about that. Of course I am. I saw his face clearly when I ran up to the two of them. When I ran up to the two men. When this gave an accurate de description of the defendant when he called the police. He was able to recall his facial features, hair, and clothes. All of which matched up perfectly with the defendant. That's really bad news. Well, this sucks. It's not like Mr. Fallen is certain of what he saw that night. Well, you can have to figure out some way of proving him wrong. Get all that evidence from the detectives and put it to use. Okay. Time to go through this testimony one more time. That's reason enough to be suspicious. It's obviously the investigation report. Objection! If was holding a briefcase at the time of the murder. I'm surprised to hear that, after all. The investigation report mentions no such thing. Investigation. Uh, oh! Sounds like he said something that he wasn't supposed to. So, the victim had a briefcase with him. But it wasn't there when the police arrived. Which can only mean that... Somebody took it from the scene. Somebody took the briefcase. Interesting, huh? You know who might have removed that briefcase from the scene of the crime? The person who took the briefcase could only have been... You? It could only have been you, Mr. Fallen. What? There were three people at the scene. You, the, def you, the defendant, and the victim. It couldn't have been the victim, and the defendant didn't have a case with him when he was arrested. Which means that you were the only one who could have taken it. Eh, then, maybe, then again... If he was supposedly arrested further down the street, maybe the defendant just stowed it away somewhere. To be quietly retrieved later. That's total BS! I mean... You can't prove that I took the case, can you? already proven it for us, Mr. F Mr. Fallen. What are you saying? Remember what you testified before? So he's holding that heavy brief... How'd you know it was heavy? Oh, shit, you're right. You told us that the briefcase was heavy. But you couldn't have known that just from looking at it. You had to have held it. Ah! Did Faith just... help me? If the truth comes out, does it really matter who wins and who loses? As long as justice is served, the world becomes a better place. She really does believe that. Ah, so that's what's going on. Well, witness, I think it's about time that you told us the truth. 
<sighs> Fine. I admit it. I took the briefcase. Oh, vintage. What for? What was the point? I first saw the two men. The defendant was holding the briefcase. I handed it to the victim. Who opened it up and looked inside. I closed it again. And that was when he drew the gun. The defendant passed the briefcase to the victim. What was inside of it? Fine. I'll explain it to you. This time I promise to tell the whole truth. Interesting. Interesting. After the defendant bolted, I ran up to check on the victim. He was dead. That briefcase caught my eye. I opened out of curiosity and the thing was absolutely full of cash! I know I should have handed it over to the cops, but I don't know what came over me. I'm sorry. I took the case for myself. I called the police using the phone in the guard station immediately afterwards. The case was full of money, and you took it! I know that I shouldn't have. I just wasn't thinking clearly. I took the case and hid it inside the guard station before the police arrived. All I can say is that I'm sorry. I made a bad choice. You should have handed the money over to the police. But, I can at least understand the kind of position you were in. That's true. It doesn't make it right, but... I'm sure that most people would have considered keeping the money in that situation. This will need to be discussed at a later date. For now, are you certain that the testimony you have given is accurate? Yes, sir. I'm not hiding anything else. Very well. Mr. Crook? Yes, Your Honor. I may have got to the bottom of the suitcase problem. I still wasn't able to shake the most important part of his testimony. Fallon is still certain that he saw Mr. Dorr that night. Not only that, but there's one more quest big question that needs answering. Is what was going on between those two that Dorr needed to bring a case of money with him? Hmm. Ness doesn't like how much of this is coming out. After the shooting. Alright, getting right into it. What time did this ca what time did this happen? The victim was shot at almost exactly at 1 a.m. I remember because I checked the clock just before I saw the two men. The defendant fled the scene immediately. It didn't take too it didn't take long for me to check the victim and take the briefcase. 1 a.m. That's the time shown on the autopsy report as well. Alright. Let me get this straight. When you first saw the two men, it was the defendant you saw holding the case. He handed it over to the victim, who then took out his gun and aimed it at, aimed it at Dor. That's when you intervened, which gave Dor an opportunity to fight back and take the gun. That's about the gist of it. There's no problem there, right? Could be an important point. We won't go there for now. There's a contradiction somewhere else, though. So. Hold it. Doesn't that seem odd? I would have thought that the killer would have taken the case with them when they ran. I'm sure they wouldn't have wanted to leave all that money behind. That is true. Perhaps they would have if they had the time. Remember that they had just shot a man in front of a witness. The killer was probably focused on escaping as quickly as possible. That's why they didn't make an effort to take the case with them. I guess that makes sense. She took the money anyways, knowing full well that what you were doing was wrong. That was stupid of me. What else do you want me to say? Though this did was undoubtedly wrong. But we're not here to discuss him, are we? That's true. I don't think there's much to be gained from pressing the issue. Hold it. The station's shown on the police diagram, isn't it? 
Yeah. The same one that I, that I was in when I first saw the two men. I didn't bring my mobile phone with me when I ran outside. The landline is right next to the door inside the station, making it the closest one to me. So that's why you didn't use your mobile. I see. Where would you look at that? Looks like the prosecution's star witness is nothing more than a thief. That seems a bit harsh. Doesn't sound like you meant to do it. You're too soft. Think about it. This guy's saying that he saw Matt shoot the victim. We know that we know that can't be true, right? Y yeah. So, what do you think that means? Hmm. I'm at least hoping that he's starting to get it. Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah, it did. The first thing we're gonna do is let's present the police call record. Objection. Like so. There's clearly something odd here. What do you mean? It was shot at 1 a.m. It shouldn't have taken you long to check the body and open the briefcase. Furthermore, the station which you called the police was quite close to the victim's body. Oh no, it shouldn't have taken you even five minutes to call the police. If you did so immediately as you claim. Take a look at the police call record. They didn't receive a call from you until 1.20 a.m. Uh, oh! Care to explain yourself, witness? Forgot to mention in my testimony. I went out of the guard station to check on the two men. The door locked behind me. It locked. Don't you have a key? Yes, well, well, the door is open using a key card. It's only one, so I normally keep it hanging around my neck. The clip was loose on it, though. I think it must have fallen off earlier that night. Oh no. I know how. Have you have you picked up on how Mags rigged this trial yet? Because knowing that Crook was still a big softy, obviously we don't want. We want to retain his services, give him a break while yet accomplishing our Mags' goal of getting his assistant off for murder. What suspicious piece of evidence was surprisingly introduced in the first testimony of this case? Answer now. Answer now in the comments. I see. So you lost your keycard, which is why you got locked out. Luckily, I was able to pick my way past the lock with a credit card in my wallet. Except I'm not that good a walk lockpick, so it took me a while to get the door open. Uh, so that's the so that's why it took you so long to call the police. Yeah, that's right. Sorry about the confusion. Please try to remember these things before you testify, witness. Now, please amend your testimony to include your last statement. Of course. I guess there's nothing wrong after all, huh? Don't be so sure. I think you might be on the right track. Of course you are. You know what the you know what the game is. Hmm. Now do we go right with this or let's try it? Objection. Are you telling the truth, witness? Of course. You noticed it, didn't you? Well, I noticed it because I knew it was going to happen. Something's not right. Is there a problem, Mr. Crook? Mr. Fallen, your keycard. Does it look anything like this? What the? Why do you have that? Wait a second. You're not. You lied to this court witness. You told us that you dropped your keycard inside the guard station. That's not where it was found. 
Because this card is found clutched in the victim's hand. That's impossible. You know what this means, don't you? There's no way for the victim to get his hands on that card before the person holding it reached the scene of the crime. It can only mean that the witness came into the contact with the victim before he died. What you don't mean? Before he died, the victim got into a struggle with his killer and tore this card away from their neck in the process. You say that I was the one who killed him? That's insane! I saw the defendant shoot him! Objection. This court only has your word to go on. It's entirely possible that Mr. Dora left the scene before the victim was killed. There's no solid evidence that the defendant is the killer. This card, on the other hand, this clearly implicates you in the murder. You realized what was inside that briefcase, didn't you? That's why you murdered the victim to get your hands on it. Yeah, between between you and Mags, and that assist from Detective Fuzz, you're playing this court like a fiddle, and you're playing Eddie like a fiddle. How is that even possible? I'm just a security guard. I don't even carry a gun. Objection. You didn't need to. This piece of evidence shows how you killed the victim. Gun. Did you forget that the victim's gun was found on the scene? All you had to do was take it from him. I wager that was when the victim tore your keycard away from you. No! You're wrong! I didn't kill anyone! You gotta believe me! Objection! Hmm. Crook. What the hell do you think you're doing? Faye? This whole time, I thought that you were an honorable person. I didn't think that you were capable of doing this. Hello, Dark Age of the Law theme. I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. This whole thing was planned, wasn't it? Just think about what you're doing. That's enough. I see no need to prolong this trial. I'm prepared to hand down my verdict. No! Your Honor, please! Rigged judge... Rigged assistant. Rigged detective. This whole trial is a setup! What's that prosecutor talking about? It's obvious that the security guard is the one that did it. A vile woman trying so hard to convict an innocent man. Order. Prosecutor Truman. One more outburst like that, and I will find you in contempt of court, understand? No! Pathetic, isn't it? I was trying so hard to cling on to a guilty verdict. Is that what this is? It can't be true. Faith wouldn't do something like that. I only met her once, but... That... That aside, that... Even if we did only meet her once, that was still a pretty clear declaration of her mindset towards the law, so... Agree. She wouldn't do something like that. If the truth comes out, does it really matter who wins and who loses? She even got him to reconsider his stance. She wouldn't. Unless... That it? Let's go find the defendant. That door. What? Oh. Court is adjourned. Interesting. That was very quick. What happened that night? Tell me. What are you talking about? You solved the case, right? What just happened back there wasn't natural. Something's going on. Ed, lay off him, man. Nothing's going on. You're just being paranoid. Don't screw with me. Did you take me for some kind of moron? Ed, don't do this. I know for a fact that there was something off about that trial, and this proves it. Take that. Don't 
you remember when this card was submitted as evidence? Nobody told me about that piece of evidence. It didn't make sense that the lead detective would just forget to hand over crucial evidence. And that's not all. The idea that the victim could have ripped this card away from his killer. Not that even noticing seems pretty unbelievable. Ness. You were leading me down this path the whole time. Busted. Huh. I thought you'd figure it out eventually. Go on then, Matt. No point in hiding it anymore. Tell that about you murdered old Raymond. What? Are you sure about this, Ness? Fine, I'll tell him then. Raymond Bett was a dealer. He sold contraband. Matt here was sent to make a deal with the guy. The location was chosen because he was secluded and we thought that it would be empty that night. Except Raymond thought it would be a good idea to try and double cross us. That's why he pulled a gun on Matt. Is everything that the witness said was the truth? Of course. Matt took revenge for Raymond's betrayal. Uh huh. I didn't want to. Getting arrested wasn't a part of the plan, of course. We knew we had to shift the blame. That's when our good friend Detective Fuzz happened upon that little keycard. When we figured out what it was, we realized that it was the perfect way to link the guard to the crime. Of course, Fuzz was technically working for the prosecution. That's why we needed someone like you to put the whole thing together for us. This whole time, you were using me. I presented forged evidence. And an innocent man convicted. Because of you! Don't be so melodramatic. It's just business. Let's face it, you're not much you're not much of a as much a cop as a lawyer. A gig like this is the best you're gonna get. And Faith? Do you think she knows? Ha! Huh. Of course she figured it out, man. Did you see how pissed she was? She's not like you. She'd have seen straight through our little operation in no time. Oof. Worst sort of burn. Oh my god. Faith. Faith! She doesn't want anything to do with you now. Where are you going, Ed? Do you really think she wants to see you right now? I highly doubt that. Oh shit. Faith! What do you want? Faith, you've got to believe me. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on back there. How stupid do you think I am? That whole trial was set up to proceed in your favor. The detective. The judge. You expect me to believe that you had nothing to do with that? Faith. I didn't. Shut up! You betrayed my trust, but I'm going to fix this. I'll find evidence of what happened today, and I'll demand a retrial. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you could... I will. When I do. I'll make damn sure that your badge gets taken away for what you did today. by Edward Crook. I told you it's a bad idea. Hey, asshole. Come on, let's get out of here. The boss want to congratulate you on a job well done. Aren't you worried about what she said? Nah. We've got ways of handling stuff like that. Now hurry up. I'm getting soaked out here. was the last time I ever saw her. I was given a choice that day. Two paths. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened to me if I refused to walk this path. I had stood up for what was right. Part of me would like to believe that I could have done it. There's another part of me that knows I wouldn't. 
truth, the truth is that I had nowhere else to go. Prodigious, prodigious prosecutor missing. Oh no. The regrets of a man who tried to be a good lawyer and wound up manipulated into a life of crime. Of supporting crime, that is. Post. Whoa. Everett Crook, I presume. Ah. Oh. Hello, Phoenix. I have some questions for you. To be continued. We will see him again in case four, no doubt. Ah, a nice, a nice little bonus case. Less a case to be solved and more of a, an exercise in the inevitable. Very much, very much along the same lines as the Zach Ramirez trial from Apollo Justice. And it's made even more an exercise of the inevitable, seeing everybody involved in this trial. A man you know was next in line to become the head of the Ravales family. By your side. Feeding you these suspicions and putting the essentially putting together the pieces for you and feeding you that truth. That voice essentially overriding Ed's own doubts that were starting to form, but didn't form quick enough. We had the judge that we know was corrupt from case two, paid off by Mags. We have the detective who we know killed someone trying to steal evidence. And we have the two paths of Edward Crook. One genuine hope for the truth, described by Faith. The other, those very same sentiments, twisted by Nathan Maggs to manipulate him. An exercise of the inevitable. You knew it was going to go badly. It's only a matter of when. And now we'll see how these regrets play into our final case next time.